Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about a new firearm from Mossberg called the MC1. Back in 1919, Mossberg actually produced a handgun. It was called the Brownie. I believe it sold for like $5. And it was a four-shot 22 long rifle Derringer. And that little handgun was the first and until now last foray into the handgun realm that Mossberg had done. So fast forward to 2019, and now Mossberg has a new nine millimeter subcompact handgun on the market called the MC1. Unlike its predecessor, this is a self-loading pistol that fires from a single stacked magazine, and it looks to be like a contender in the same market space as the Glock 43. So what we're gonna do is get familiar with this little handgun, do some shooting with it, try it with some hollow points, give you a breakdown on what it comes with in the box and how it stacks up to competitive products that are already on the market. So now let's head out to the range and do some shooting with the MC1. You're going to notice the clothing changes in this video because this isn't our first range session with the MC1. On our first range session, we ran into a number of problems with the handgun. It was failing to go into battery while firing mid-magazine. It wasn't the first round, like a full magazine was dragging on the slide or anything. Look at that. Did not go all the way into battery. It's slightly out of battery. I had a dead trigger. And we, it happened with multiple different types of ammunition, both with Glock mags and the factory mags that the MC1 shipped with. So we decided to give the gun a second chance to see if after 400 rounds in the first range session, if we fired more, perhaps the gun would break in. Now, if you watch the channel, you'll know I'm not a big advocate of breaking guns in. If a gun needs to have 500 or more rounds put through it before it works right, I think that's shoddy manufacturing and or a poor design. I could feel the slide go forward on that one. And uh, that's with federal ammunition. That's different ammo. The ammo that we start off that was 115 grain ball. Uh, that was LAX ammo. This is 124 grain federal, and it just didn't uh, didn't go all the way home. There's nothing keeping it from going home that I can see by visually inspecting the gun. So I talked to a lot of people on the internet and I asked what their experiences were, other owners of the MC1, and I would say the vast majority said that their guns work just fine, but I did find other MC1 owners out there that were having similar problems as I was having with mine. As luck would have it, I would always get the lemon. We're back out here though to give it a second chance. This morning we thoroughly cleaned the gun, we broke it apart, inspected everything, took it apart, cleaned it, lubed it, as, as best we could just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the gun or something got in there somewhere where it shouldn't be everything seems to work just fine after the cleaning and even before the cleaning when we took it apart we just couldn't find anything wrong mechanically with the gun so we're going to resume our testing today and we're going to be using the same ammunition federal 124 grain ball and some 115 grain lax now keep in mind the failures we had were with multiple magazines multiple ammo types it wasn't ammo related, it was definitely gun related. We have the factory flush fit six round magazine. Now what's interesting about these magazines is they will fairly easily take a seventh round. That could cause problems if you carry your gun on an empty chamber, you stuff seven rounds in here, you're not gonna be able to draw the slide back. So only put six rounds into it. Lock it in. And let's hope that we don't have any failures to go into battery like we had previously. Okay, now that's another problem we found with the gun on our last range session is every once in a while it wouldn't lock open. I'm trying to keep my thumb away from that slide stop, but it's in the exact same location as the Glock 43 and I don't have that problem with the Glock 43. So there you saw the gun fail to lock open. 
This is a factory seven round magazine. It has a pinky extension that gives you one extra round. It definitely makes the gun more ergonomic because your pinky no longer dangles. You can actually get a firm grip on the gun. Let's go ahead and chamber that, that first round. And as you can see, guys, I'm keeping my thumb well away from that slide, stop slide release, okay? Okay, that time it locked open just fine. Oops, dropped the mag. So anyway, we're gonna grab some more magazines, do some more shooting, and hopefully the MC1 has the fleas worked out of it. And uh, yeah, that would be a good sign because I did buy this gun off Gun Broker. I paid $349 for it because I couldn't find it anywhere in distribution. And I really wanted to get my hands on one because I had a lot of people asking me questions. All right, let's grab some more magazines. Gun Mag Warehouse was kind enough to send us some extra Glock 43 mags, and we're gonna be using those. They're extended magazines from the ETS group, and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. The MC1 does use Glock magazines. I'm not joking either. It uses Glock 43 magazines. Here's a standard six round Glock 43 magazine, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire off uh, six rounds of ball nine millimeter. Insert that into the magazine well, easily charge the pistol, and has nice big three dot sights. And what's really nice about these sights is that they are compatible with SIG handguns. The MC1 has a rather unique disassembly method, and it keeps you from having to pull the trigger to take the gun apart. A lot of people like having some way to decock their striker-fired pistol without having to pull the trigger, which is required on a number of popular firearms for disassembly, and they don't like pulling the trigger for safety reasons, and I get that. So when Mossberg decided to design this handgun, they did something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and clear the weapon first. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out of the gun, lock the slide to the rear, and make sure that the chamber is empty and now if you take a look at the rear of the slide you have this little button and a rear plate this plate and button are held in place by spring tension here on the striker assembly itself push this button in with your index finger and pull down and the rear plate comes right off reach inside grab the striker itself with your index finger and just pull up and your striker comes out no trigger pulling required now hit the slide release and the gun breaks apart into two halves. The lower is polymer. The magazine release is reversible. When you have it in the field strip position, you can, the instruction manual tells you how to reverse the magazine release. So you can put it over on the other side. And for those pistols that have the cross block safety feature, which would be located right here where my index finger is, you can also reverse the functionality of that if you're a left-handed shooter. The slide, Pretty much conventional browning type stuff. Here we have uh, nested recoil springs on a metal guide rod and then a browning type action on the barrel. Put it back together, simply reverse the process. Make sure you get your recoil spring on its perch correctly. Lock the slide to the rear again. Take your striker assembly, push it all the way forward. Take your end cap, kind of push down on the striker assembly and pop it into place. And the gun is now ready to resume shooting. Sometimes it seems like I have the worst luck in the world and I may agree with you on that point. It seems like I have pretty bad luck. We don't go out trying to find faults in new guns. We get our firearms just like you do for the most part. We'll get them through the dealer distribution network, through Copper, uh, because I am an FFL holder. We get them through Gun Broker, like the pistol in this video. We get them from Big Daddy Unlimited sometimes, which is a retailer, not a manufacturer, or we'll get them from Atlantic Firearms. We'll get T&E guns that are sent to us that aren't cherry-picked, that are from actual 
retailers like Big Daddy Unlimited doesn't even warehouse the guns, they drop ship them so there's no way to cherry pick a gun. But yet we had problems with the 527 American in a previous video. This handgun picked up from Gun Broker and we're finding problems with the handgun. And I hate making these types of videos. I don't want to be known for making negative reviews or giving, being negative in video, but gosh, guys, we have to point out problems when we find them. And we know we go out of our way to try to make sure we don't get cherry picked guns, that we get guns that you're going to get through the distribution network. So again, maybe we just have bad luck. I don't know, but we're always going to be honest with you guys because we're viewer supported and that's why we enjoy being viewer supported. So here's the Glock 43 on the bottom and the MC1 on top. And as you can see, they're very much the same size, about the same thickness, same length. If I set the MC1 on top of the Glock 43, you can see that, again, they're about the same thickness, same length, same 3.4-ish length, uh, inch-ish length barrel. So very, very comparable. And what I found interesting that the MC1 is so much are so similar to the Glock 43 in dimensions that I just grabbed a random Glock 43 uh, holster I had laying around and I stuck the MC1 in it and lo and behold it fit. Now I'm not going to say the MC1 is going to fit in all Glock 43 mag, or mags holsters uh, so you might want to check that. Don't go out and buy one or order one online if you have an MC1 thinking it's for sure going to fit because it may not. I just got lucky stuck the MC1 in this holster and it worked. Now one other thing I would like to point out about the Glock 43 and the MC1. You'll notice the Glock 43 has no accessory rail, nor does the MC1, but they both have their serial numbers in the same spot right there where the accessory rail would be. All right, so how does this thing stack up to another popular small pocket auto? <laughs> I'm calling it a pocket auto. Some people say it's too big for pocket carry. Well, the P365 is an extremely popular handgun. I was madly in love with it until my first one broke at 800 rounds. My second one stopped working at 400 rounds. This is my third one. I want to love this handgun. This is the perfect size, weight, ergonomics. Everything about this gun is right, except in my experience, it's just not reliable. I can't trust it after having two lemons. But if you take a look at it next to the MC1, it's a little bit smaller, about the same length grip, but it's just a little bit smaller in, in length, but holds 10 rounds. And if you get the, the pinky extension magazines, those hold 12 rounds and you will be able to get your pinky on the gun. And last but not least, I know a lot of you guys like revolvers. A lot of people pocket carry revolvers. This is a Smith & Wesson uh, 340 PD and 357 mag. And you can see how the gun stacks up compared to this particular pocket revolver. We're gonna go ahead and try some 115 grain Wolf steel cased ammo. A lot of people use really affordable ammunition for target practice, so we're gonna see how it runs in the MC1. And we're using a standard Glock magazine. Okay, that magazine worked pretty well. Grab another one. 
And once again, you can see we're shooting steel case. All right, seems like the steel case stuff works pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is take some 124 grain Golden Saber Remington self-defense ammunition. We've already fired some X-Def hollow points through the gun. I'm gonna take one round and top it off so we'll have eight rounds total. Here's one of the Golden Sabers. And we wanna test it with hollow points because for our local gun store told us they had a couple of, these, a couple of these guns come back because they would not reliably feed hollow points. So we're trying to see if this gun's gonna have that problem. So far it hasn't. It's had different problems, but it hasn't been hanging up on hollow points. I just felt the slide hang up and then just barely go back into battery. I was going to check to see if it was out of battery, but it didn't. So I can feel the slide come back, go forward, and then click, go to its full forward position. So this slide is hanging up. I can't even blame it on the factory mags. It's doing with the Glock mags. I don't know why it's doing it. Maybe it'll work out with several hundred rounds fired, but I don't believe in break-in periods for handguns. It's a simple machine. The gun ships with these two magazines. This is the six rounder, and this is the seven rounder with the extended base plate. Taking a look at these magazines, looking at how they're molded, how the mag cuts are, how the followers are shaped, how the rounds ride on the followers, all says ETS Group. I suspect Mossberg went to ETS Group because they weren't going to use Glock factory magazines, Glock 43 factory magazines, in the guns that they shipped out to their customers. They wanted their own magazines, but the gun obviously is compatible with Glock 43 magazines. So these look like ETS Group mags, even though they're not marked as such. The guys over at Gun Mag Warehouse sent out some extra magazines for us to use while filming, and they are ETS Group magazines. And these are the extended versions. Now, if you take a look at both of these magazines, each has nine rounds loaded. They're 10 round magazines. One we can easily put an 11th round into, the other we can't. Take a look at the magazine springs. And this is one of the reasons I don't like ETS Group magazines. They're known to have problems. This magazine spring is compressing normally. This one is all bunched up and really, really screwed up. So we jumped on the ETS Group website to see what the actual magazine capacities were for the magazines that we got from Gun Mag Warehouse. So the magazine I'm holding here is not a 10 round magazine. This is supposed to be a 12 round magazine. I can get 11 rounds into it, but there is no way I'm gonna get that 12th round in there without breaking the feed lips, all right? So if you take a look at how the magazine spring is compressing, it's compressing off to this side of the follower. We looked at pictures in the ETS, on the ETS Group website, and it shows this spring neatly collapsing beneath the follower and the follower going all the way to the bottom of the floor plate. If that were true, we would be able to get 12 rounds into this magazine. But since the magazine spring is binding up a little bit, we're not able to get that 12th round into the magazine. This is 11 rounds because we were absolutely unable to get that 12th round in there based upon how the springs have coiled up to the right-hand side of the follower. And that one locked open. And now we have a factory seven rounder. The good news is the gun's working flawlessly today. That's actually really good news. Mm -hmm. 
All right, locked open and everything. Biting flies. And then we have our factory six rounder. And she locks open. All right, the gun's working. That's actually good news. <laughs> I was really worried that I got a bad pistol. So about mm, getting up around five, 600 rounds, the gun is working properly after a second cleaning. For those of you that are gonna carry the MC1SC for say pocket carry or something like that, you're gonna find that the gun is nicely contoured. The edges are nice and rounded, the sights are nice and rounded. It does not have night sights, but I do think there is an option for them. I'd have to check the website for that, but the, the gun I have here does not have them, but still you have nice smoothed out sights, snag-free sights. Again, if you're gonna draw from a holster in the pocket, uh, the gun seems to be very well suited for that. And one thing I really do like about this over the Glock series of pistols, including the 43 and my favorite, the 43X, is you have an enlarged trigger guard here. So you'll notice there's plenty of room to get a gloved finger into the trigger guard so that's a bonus to me because that's one of the reasons why i moved away from glock years ago and started carrying other firearms so the controls are easy to access the sights are really good on the gun even with the, the fact it doesn't have night sights which i would want if i was going to carry it every day but these three dot sights work really really nicely the serrations you have multi-cut uh, serrations here so you have cuts going this way you have cuts one at least one cut going back but it gives very very positive uh, grip onto that slide even with my bum finger I'm easily able to operate the slide on the gun so overall the ergonomics and stuff seem to be spot on I just question whether or not there's much of a market for the gun simply because the Glock 43 has evolved into the 43x but the 43 is a popular pistol here we have let's see one two three four five six seven this is a nine round ETS group magazine that we can only get eight rounds into it has a really goofy stack to it uh, yeah, I'm not going to complain anymore about the ETS group mags. I've done enough of that in this video. One thing I will say, the trigger is very nice on it. Heavy brake, stops immediately. The reset is right there and full release is right there. So you pretty much have to let the trigger all the way out before it'll reset, but you can hear a click and you can definitely feel it reset through your finger. Here we have the flush fit six round magazine, pops right in. We're shooting some federal 124 grain ball. And here's our seven rounder. That second cleaning and a little bit more shooting seems to have done the work to get this gun working for us again. And as soon as I say that, I have a dead trigger and the slide just went home on its own. <laughs> okay, this is an aftermarket magazine, but I do think this is the same company making magazines for Mossberg. The slide just dropped home, I had a dead trigger and then it went home on its own. Weird. So that type of failure is what we were seeing the first range session with the factory magazines and even with the Glock 43, the Glock manufactured six round magazines, we were seeing that. That's the first time it's happened today in probably 250, 300 rounds. So hopefully that doesn't happen much anymore. I was gaining faith in this handgun and I'm starting to lose it again. The Mossberg MC1 SC seems like a viable competitor to the anything other than Glock crowd. There's some folks out there that simply don't want to buy a Glock, and this handgun would appeal to them. 
but also it comes to market at a low price of 349 bucks online. I believe it's full MSRP is 425. I bought mine for 349 off Gun Broker because I couldn't find them in the distribution network anywhere uh, at Copper. So I just wanted to get my hands on one because so many people are asking me questions about it. So the gun seems to be well made. Uh, we did have problems on the first range trip. In the first 500 rounds, we had multiple malfunctions, mostly failures to go into battery. Uh, we saw no stove piping or failures to feed other than um, the magazine dropping out if I gripped the gun too tightly. And that's about it. I can't really think of any other problems we had with the gun, just that failure to go into battery while shooting and it would happen mid-magazine. All those problems seem to have gone away after we passed, say, the 500 round mark or so. So today we had it happen once with a non-factory magazine. You be the judge. Would I carry the gun? I'm hesitant because of those problems. Some of our Patreons that had seen the first video, uh, they, some of the guys said that they had similar problems with their guns, uh, but most people seem to be happy with their pistols. This finish on the gun, Mossberg calls it a diamond-like finish. To me, it looks like melanite. It's a very nice looking little handgun. I definitely like the larger trigger guard and the fact that it uses SIG sights and Glock magazines. If I were gonna carry the gun, I definitely would use the Glock magazines. I have no faith in ETS Group magazines whatsoever. All right, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, we are not supported by the industry. We do not get paid to make videos, so we are 100% viewer supported. If you would like to support us so we can continue on our mission to bring you as unbiased information as we possibly can, please follow the link down below and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Also, swing by and check us out at coppercustom.com. Last but not least, we are Twitch gamers right now. We're playing Division 2, Jason and I. So if you're a Patreon supporter and you want to play a video game with us and possibly live stream on Twitch, send us a message and we'll confirm you're a Patreon supporter and we'll add you as a friend on the PSN network. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support and we will talk to you guys soon. We're going to finish off with some 124 grain Federal out of the seven round magazine. Thanks guys. We'll talk to you soon.